me that's that's quite exciting to make to make that direct connection going through the centuries with an object like that. We've still got a few minutes left of this set. So another of the Robinson family pieces, this is from 100 years earlier, and we don't have that such a direct visceral connection with the heart, but one of his ancestors had a song book. And this is one of the songs that she wrote in it. So maybe she would have sung it whilst playing on Queen Mary's heart. Maybe. You can dream. You can imagine it, OK? This is like this is from about the time of the English Civil War, and it's a it's a song all about it's, it's one of the world turned upside down songs basically. So it's not a meant for the topsy turvy state of things. And I have to reach you in the heart for it. just thinking that I'm sure John Robertson spent many hours reaching the heart like that. And I forgot to tell you, there's a wonderful anecdote about him. Um, there was a man who visited Lude House in about 1720, and he said to John Robertson, I hear you have the ancient heart. I hear you have, I hear you have two ancient hearts in the house, as he did. He had, two, he had the Queen Mary heart and another. And John Robertson said, yes, certainly. After dinner, we'll go through to the drawing room and I'll show you the heart. So they went through. And he said, now here are the two ancient harps. He says, the larger one is louder, but the smaller one, Queen Mary's harp, is the sweeter. But which would you like to hear? And, and the visitor said, well, the smaller one, for sure. And so John Roberts took up Queen Mary's harp and he played it until daybreak. I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> here's, here's this tune from John Roberts' ancestor, the, the, the well-turned-upside-down tune. 